welcome back to a new decades episode today we are filming the first episode in the next decade the 1910s so as you guys saw in the intro it is a crazy time the young men have gone off to war daniel unfortunately came to say goodbye to emma and he has gone off to war and Gianni has been able to spend some time with her and it looks like they were able to have some really good quality conversation. So I hope you guys are excited for this new decade. If you are, please give this video a thumbs up and let me know in the comments what you think. And if you haven't already, please hit subscribe. We're gonna be doing this decade challenge all the way to 2010. So you haven't missed much. And if you haven't already, you can click the link above and catch up on the playlist. That way you guys can be caught up to follow along with the series going forward. With all that being said, you guys, we have so much to cover today, so let's just jump into it. So before we get too, for, too far into it, we have a couple things we have to review, but I wanted to quickly show you guys and announce, if you haven't seen on Twitter, I recently announced that I have just launched my very own personal blog, and I'm really excited about it. It's called fortheloveofsims.com, and on here, I plan on sharing Sims-related articles. I'm gonna be doing articles on challenges that I've been doing, CC finds that I've found that I wanna share with you guys, and a place where you guys can go to find the links for the things that you see in my videos and I also plan on doing articles and personal blogs on sharing my YouTube journey with you guys so if you guys haven't already please check it out I will put the link in the description below and if you'd like to you guys could sign up for my newsletter and we could stay connected and you'll get notified every time I post a new article so if you guys check it out thank you so much I really appreciate it and I hope you guys enjoy so let's jump into it. We are in the 1910s now. We have made it through the 19, or the 1890s and the 1900s, and now we are entering World War I. So let's expand it and see what this decade challenge rules is all about. So 1910s, World War I. All are teenagers, young adults, or adults, or who will become teenagers during this decade will have to leave for war. To simulate the wartime leave, roll dice and feed them to a cow plant. Odd numbers equal death, even numbers equal live. Now, I've decided personally that I am not going to show well, I think I would prefer to not show them dying and living. I think we could do it in a more um, sensitive way. I know that we've all grown and have learned to love a lot of these characters and seeing them just being eaten by a cow plant kind of makes me sad. So I thought we could do it in a more honorable way. But let me know what you guys think in the comments below. If you want to see a dramatic cow plant eating death scene, that's fine. I just didn't think it necessarily fit with this LP. So I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts on that. Assuming that all the males that live have experienced war, they must take one of these traits once they reach adulthood. Gloomy, hot-headed, clumsy, insane, mean, or non-committal. So they need to gain a... Um, they need to gain a negative trait when they come back from war if they live. Optional. You can put the men in another house or lot to make it feel as if they have left for war. I've already done that and I've downloaded a place from the gallery so I'm excited to show you guys that. Men cannot work in their young adult stage and may only work once they reach adulthood. Men who are about to go to war get a chance to have a child before leaving. Children must go to school. Teenagers who go to school must get a C or higher. Uh, students who do not receive or hire must be sent away from the house. Men can now work as painters. Drywall is allowed. However, because we're in a war, I can't see the family really being able to afford to upgrade their house much. Um, and other than that, keep the cow plant well and nourished. So, this is all about war. I have quite a lot of plans and I don't think we're going to see any crazy scenes for the foreseeable future. Right now we're just going to build the scene and like I said I really want to hear your guys' feedback first on how we handle the uh, cow plant death situation. So here we are. We are joining the household. We've got beautiful Emma here who just got back from a interesting day with Gianni. And I think that while they were out, Gianni was expressing to her, you know, what had gone down the last time he um, saw her with the family dinner and with everything going on. 
why he bailed on her and didn't show the support that she was expecting from him during that dinner party. And he basically expressed to her that he's basically been living under his father's shadow, shadow his entire life. And to be honest, when it came time to stand up to him, he didn't have the courage like Emma did. And he feels absolutely awful about it because he felt like he let her down. But I think Emma really understands that Branson is kind of a scary and intimidating man and being his son would be really hard. So Emma understands as long as Gianni will continue to stand by her going forward. And as you could see during the last time period here, these two have started to grow a lot closer since Daniel has left for war and their relationship is actually starting to be a budding romance. So that's very exciting. Now, in today's episode, we have a lot to cover, and in order to make our teens go to the military, I, to the military career, I had to make them young adults. I don't know of any mods that would work for me, so you guys are going to have to let me know. For all I know, MC Command Center lets me do it, and I just don't know. So, I've aged up Mit Mitchell, and I've aged up Daniel to young adults right now, but I'm going to have all of them stay young adults for a really long time. So, we're going to mimic that. They are like 18 years old joining the army and not like 25. So um, I am going to be making Emma and Harry young adults today. But like I said, they are 18 technically or like 19. They're very young still. Now we also have Charles here who is going to age up into a teen today. Today, So all a lot of exciting things. But of course... Uh, we are still entering a very sad time. Emma did recently have to say goodbye to her good friend Daniel and I think that that has absolutely broken her heart. The family has realized the war is coming close to home and they have big decisions to make and they're all starting to feel it. So I think that we're going to be focusing on that today. So it is actually really late, so I'm going to try to get everyone to go to sleep. Now, in the last episode, Mr. Theo aged up, and we haven't given him a makeover yet. So I am going to quickly jump in to Cass, and we're going to give him his new look. So here's Theodore Dempsey. He aged up with black hair. I did jump in here quickly just to give him a little bit of a look just so it wasn't going to take so long to go through all of it. Um, so I'm just going to quickly give him his little makeover here. Alrighty you guys, so I gave him the inquisitive trait. I'm pretty sure we went over that in the last episode. Um, this is his everyday look. This is his formal, his sleep, party, swimwear, hot weather, and Cold weather and I think we gave look at him with his little freckles he is so cute this is little Edward so handsome so there is our two youngest little baby loonies alrighty so I have oh this one here is Edward's bed and then this one will be Theo's bed We've got Emma already in bed. We will put dad to sleep, mom to sleep, and then I will catch back up with you guys in the morning. So the first one alike, awake is little Charles. Now Charles is going to be celebrating his birthday today when he gets home from school. He is feeling it pretty good. I recently went and I had him meet all the kids his age and I had him form a group called Charles Friends. <laughs> Very original. And we've added Lucy and Lucy Stokes, if you guys remember, is in a Deo's household with the Stokes family. They live there. He also met Gage Stokes. He met Carly Clinton, which is Bill Clinton's daughter. And we met Brienne, which is Daniel's sister. And we met Henry Jr. Higgins. Now the Higgins family is a family that just recently moved to town. And I'm really excited to introduce you guys to them later on in this decade. But he did also meet Henry. So that is their, his little friend group. So I will send those two off to school. Emma is going to come over here and she is going to start serving breakfast. And I'll help her clean up a little bit. Dad, uh, now we'll get Harry to come over and repair 
this and he is going to clean out the toilet. So I'm gonna get Emma to cook the birthday cake for tonight for her brother Charles. Do I have a painting for the other toddler? I do, right here, this is Theo's. I'm gonna have Charles come home early and I'm gonna have him come here. Okay, it's better than nothing. Now we'll get M Alice to paint from reference. That's a little bit better anyways, right? There we go. So now Harry, or now Charles can go back to finishing his homework. Okay, so we've got the turkey dinner ready. The kids are doing their homework. I think Nellie's finished hers. Do extra credit work. Charles is feeling a little bit embarrassed. So I am gonna have him wash his hands, brush his teeth and get some water before his birthday. And then I'm gonna invite all of his friends over. That way they can all have some fun. Okay. So it's a little late, but we're gonna do it anyway. So let us go to Charles and he's gonna start a gathering. So all of his friends are coming over. Everyone's gonna come eat. Charles' friends should be coming over. Yes, here they are. So here's Lucy and here is Brienne. Brienne is so cute. So I'm gonna have him hang out with his little friends. They're all gonna eat dinner. It's not a big party, but it's a little party. He's visiting, so let's have little cute and adorable Nellie. I want her to do a friendly introduction to everyone because she hasn't had a chance to meet everyone. So there's the new kid that just moved to town, Henry Jr. Higgins. And then we also have her introducing herself to, I believe this is, who is this again? Uh, Carly Clinton. Where's the other cuties? Oh, here we go, here's Lucy. So I want her to do a friendly introduction with her too. So it shows here that Charles is enjoying his friendlies, his friends in the company. They're all having a really nice little birthday dinner with all the little kids. So nice to see the family being able to be all together, having an awesome day, having a nice birthday together. So Lucy is an art lover, Charles has learned. I am gonna let Emma start to clean up the house. And we will open this and we will take out Charles' birthday cake. And I'm gonna have him come over and blow out the candles. Charles will officially become a teen. And all of his friends are there to see it, which is really nice. There, all his little friends are there to cheer him on. Oh, look at his little birthday party. Okay, so Charles is hot-headed, so he already has his negative trait for when he returns from war. <laughs> um, but he is going to go down the medical career, so I'm going to give him genius. And I want to give him, I suppose, knowledge for now. We'll make him a nerd brain. Because I want him to be really smart. If he's going to be a doctor, oh. Wow. Was anyone expecting Charles to be that good looking? His chin's a little long, but okay. Whew. We need to go uh, give this little guy, this cutie, a um, makeover right now. Wow. The only thing is this chin, but that can be fixed real quick. I think he's pretty good looking, you guys. His hair isn't supposed to be blonde, it's supposed to be black. But I am not mad at it. Look how cute he is. Let's just fix the dimensions of his face quickly. Okay, I'm gonna go give him a makeover, you guys, and I will be right back. Alrighty, you guys, so I finished Charles' makeover, and I think he looks really cute. So he's a really big, like, built guy like he's big <laughs> so
so I really like him. I think he turned out really cute. I think we still were able to capture the cheekbones that he got from his mom. Look at her. She is so cute. So here is his everyday look. Then we have his formal, his fitness. See what I mean? Like his legs are big. Like he's just really big built guy. Um, his sleepwear, his party wear, his swim, hot weather, and his cold weather. And I tried to make him look a little bit more put together, whereas like Harry is still very much like, I'm totally fine on the farm. And Charles is very like, always wants to look good and you know, presentable because he's trying to paint an image of himself you know, to the community. So there is Charles, you guys, with his makeover. Alrighty, you guys, so I am gonna send everybody to sleep. And once again, we will catch up with everyone in the morning. So it's the next morning. We are currently at Gianni's place and Gianni is a little nervous today uh, because it's a big day for him. And the reason why it's a big day is because he plans to meet with Emma's father and express to him, express to him that he loves his daughter and that he wants to marry her. So right now he's just giving himself a pep talk and trying to psych himself up to get the courage together to call Emma's dad and have him meet. Uh, meet with him to have this conversation because of course he would not pursue it any further until he um, He wouldn't want to pursue it any further until he has had the opportunity to speak with Emma's dad first So I think he's gonna try to find his dad if his dad's home so he's telling his parents that he has decided that he wants to marry Emma and that he really loves her and he plans on talking to um, plans on talking to her dad today. Oh, I think his dad would be upset about this and say, you know, she is not a woman that you should be marrying. We have an image in this family to withhold and I think that by choosing Emma, that would not be the best choice for you, son. That would really affect my political career, your future political career. She comes from nothing. She has no money. She is very belligerent. She feels like she can say whatever she wants, whenever she wants, and she is not a proper woman to make a wife out of. So he says, I'm sorry, son, but I do not back this decision, and I think that you're making the wrong choice, and I will not support that. And he just thinks it's a bad idea, and that if he's to make that decision, then he makes it on his own, and that he will not continue to support him. And Gianni's saying, you know, I don't care about what your rules are. I feel like I could still be a good leader with her by my side. She has great ideas and her voice deserves to be heard. And I don't think it's fair of you to judge her based off of what's in her, you know, what her family's background is and what they own. So Gianni does not agree with his dad's decision. And even though he was hoping to have his dad's blessing, um, he's going to go through with it anyways. So I think I'm going to have the two of them uh, take a break from each other to cool off because they both are just like not having it with each other right now. And his dad's super angry, no win scenario. He feels like no matter what he does, his son does not listen to him. But Gianni is still feeling super confident. So he definitely still plans to go through with it and he automatically got flirty, which I find very, very interesting. And then he is going to travel with Harry, with Elias Dempsey. Now, they don't necessarily not get along, but they don't know each other very well. So I think I'm going to have them meet at the saloon. Because why not? There are two men. They can go to the saloon. Now, I remember back then, People got married a lot younger, especially women. They were usually teens before they left the house. So that is why we are going to have Emma, hopefully, if Elias says yes, be getting married younger. Um, so these two are both very young to be getting married, but um, it's important. 
So the two of them are going to come and sit together. He's saying hello to Elias, and then he is going to propose a crazy screen scheme. That's a good idea. So he's going to say, I know that you don't necessarily know me that well, but I want you to know that I really love your daughter, and I really want to ask her to marry me. And I'm hoping that you will give me your blessing. That way me and her can be together. I wouldn't do anything to go against you and your wish wishes, so I wanted to ask first. Oh, <gasps> that went red. That's not good. We had an awkward encounter. So I think that right away his response was, mm, are you crazy? My daughter is still so young. Uh, I don't even know who you are. How can you expect me to just say, I trust you and that you can marry my daughter? He, he's getting up, he's walking around, he's probably got to cool off, he's probably mad. There's a girl here with pink hair that's not supposed to be here. <laughs> um, and oh my gosh, Elias is leaving. So, oh, I feel so bad for Gianni. I think that he's feeling a little sad right now. He did not get the response that he was hoping for. So I think we're just going to send him home. Oh, poor Gianni. He was hoping that Emma's dad would give him his blessing. So we are back home. Elias hasn't come back home yet. Emma is freaking out because... Ooh! Oh my gosh! Emma just got hit by lightning. Oh my gosh, Emma, why were you out there? Oh, Emma. And she doesn't even know that Gianni's planning on asking her if she knew that her father treated him that way. I'm sure she would have been so upset. Um, but that is just what it is, you know. So, hopefully, uh, they will be able to work that out. Over the last couple days, Harry has been debating whether or not he was going to go to war to try to help protect his family and join the army to help protect his town, or if he would stay home to help his father. Now that Charles is a teen, he does feel a little bit better about leaving for a while um, in order to help the war effort because he's got his brother there. So he is going to go ahead and he's going to join the army. And he is going to tell his mom. So Elias has just gotten home from talking with Gianni. And he's not super happy about the results of that conversation. But now Harry is telling his mom and his dad that he has decided to join the army to protect the family and to do his part, what he feels is his part, um, in the war effort. And and by the looks of it, uh, it appears that Elias was supportive of this. I think he appreciates the fact that his son feels the need to defend his family. And I think his mom, you know, she probably is very sad, but she also, you know, understands that that is the men's duty during this time, and the women were there just to support it the best that they could. And apparently, we've got uh, Charles over here doing some investigating and uh, studying for his uh, medical career. <laughs> and we have little Emma in here playing with their her little brother, um, not knowing that um, Gianni had asked her father for her hand in marriage and I think that Elias is going to struggle with that for a little bit before he expresses that to her. I think that we are going to leave this episode here. I hope you guys are enjoying this. I know I've presented a lot of different things to you guys right now and I'm so excited to show you what we've got planned or what I have planned for this decade. 
all of the side ep episodes that we have planned. It is going to be so exciting. So if you guys aren't already, make sure you hit subscribe so you don't miss the next episode. And thank you so much as always for watching. You guys are awesome and I really appreciate it. How do you feel about Harry going to war? How do you feel about everything? And I think we'll leave it there. And until next time, you guys, I am going to say bye for now.